My name is Jim Kane. I study bees and pollination here in northern Utah. I am delighted that you are honoring Charles Michener at these meetings. I started my PhD with Mitch in 1978. Mitch was as old then as I am now, and he had already been publishing bee research for decades before I was born. I was younger then. Mitch was my very first academic advisor and role model. He helped focus my lifelong enthusiasm for insects. Mitch showed me many qualities to emulate. He is kind, fair-minded, and tolerant. Mitch has high standards for scholarship, for critical thinking, and for writing that is clear and concise. Mitch is the patriarch of a vast and successful academic family of bee biologists, taxonomists, and sociobiologists. Most of you at this meeting can trace your academic family back to Mitch or his friend and colleague Padre Jesus Moray. For some of you, both gentlemen are in your academic family. Those two began publishing together in 1955, the year that I was born. I believe that the friendly, cooperative, and scholarly personalities of Mitch and Moray was absorbed by their students and by their students' students. Hi, I'm Deborah Smith. I work at the University of Kansas, where Charles Michener has been for the past 65 years or so. Uh, Mitch first influenced my career when I was a graduate student um, because Mitch had trained so many excellent students over the years, including my own advisor, George Eichwart. Then, after I got a job at the University of Kansas, Mitch renewed my interest in bees and helped me get started um, looking at Asian stingless bees. Why? Mitch came to me. He said, I can uh, uh, support you either if you want to work on beetles or if you want to work on bees. But if you want to work on bees, here's a box that I think that might be appropriate for that. And that's when I got hooked on bees by Charles Mitchner, who was then and still is the foremost authority on bees of the world. One of the things that many people might not be so aware of with Mitch is that he actually made great advances in the field of sociobiology, and that was what my PhD was on. So he studied the social behavior of large numbers of collectives and other bees, published quite a few seminal papers on these before sociobiology became the buzzword that it became with the publication of E.O. Wilson's book in the mid-70s. Mitch had already published The Social Behavior of the Bees in 1973. I think one of the most important things Michener contributed was an affection for studying the primitively social insects, the intermediate stages. Prior to Mitch, everybody studied honeybees and army ants, which are not informative for the evolution of sociality. His examples have inspired my few efforts in systematic melatology, and if I can achieve one-tenth of what he has, then I shall consider myself quite successful. Um, it's impossible to kind of enumerate the, the many achievements that Mitch has had, as they are myriad. Um, if I were to uh, select a few highlights, it would be his development of one of the world's major research collections on bees, um, a uniquely comprehensive source of data that's being used by melatologists worldwide. Um, his contributions to quantitative methods in systematics during the 1950s and 1960s had reaches beyond the borders of bee biology and really influenced and reshaped the way every evolutionary biologist went about reconstructing um, patterns of diversity. Lastly, he served a foundational role in the emergence of sociobiology. Um, and through his study of bee behavior, he really helped pave the way for many of the major sociobiologists that followed him. Any one of these would represent the pinnacle of a career. 
and yet they're all enveloped within his singular life and paralleled by his steadfast and sustaining work in bee systematics. Of course, the, the understanding of bee phylogeny that without him we would be you know, decades behind. Um, and I think you know, a main thing is taking a global perspective. You can, you know, Padre More was working in South America. He understood the South American bees well, uh, but Mitch really got to know them worldwide and not just their morphology and re relationships and classification, but also their behavior and ecology. I would say one of the things I find most impressive or most interesting about his work is that he always includes or he's always had a strong interest in the natural history of the bees, um, environmental influences on sociality, and not just pure morphological systematics. Of course, the most obvious uh, contribution is uh, his Bees of the World. This book is absolutely an outstanding, thoroughly complete account of the taxonomy and biology of bees. There never has been a book quite like that covering any group of animals as large as bees. There probably never will be another one uh, that surpasses that. It's, un it's unbelievable. But Mitch's contributions are more than that. He has set a tone for the people working on bees that one is one of cooperation, giving, trying to get along, and trying to work together to uh, investigate these animals. He's an outstanding model to follow. Charles Michener was my major professor, and one thing he taught all of us was how to be a good professor. All of my PhD students have good jobs, and it's because of how Mitch taught me to be a major advisor. Much can and will be said of Mitch's legacy through his many monographs, books, and revisions on the subject of bees. Um, he further trained a legion of students that are now spread throughout the world, and this too is at a lasting influence on the field. Uh, it is right to say that those alone will have, have had and will continue to have um, major benefits for the field for years after we are all gone. Nonetheless, <laughs> uh, I personally believe that Mitch's greatest legacy uh, is the welcoming atmosphere that he encouraged for the militological community. He has never been one to claim territory uh, over the subject and instead uh, actively fostered engagement uh, and collaboration and encouraged um, a rich variety of opinions and approaches to the subject. Without the global perspective of bee classification that Mitch did, um, I think we'd be far worse off. The question, I guess, is would anybody have replaced him? And I'm not sure that there's anybody, that there have been many people in the history of science that have been so dedicated to understanding so much about such a large taxonomic group. Certainly there are ornithologists, but you know, how many of them are, are completely global and they've got much less than half the number of species that we deal with with the bees. So I think the, the, the global perspective that he took early on meant that great strides have been possible in bee systematics um, that wouldn't have been possible um, if it had been left to almost anybody else. So where would we be without Mitch? Where would we be without his work? Um, I think the field of bee research would be much more scattered and piecemeal without the strong phylogenetic framework or systematic framework that Mitch contributed so much to. But speaking personally, I think Mitch really put his mark on the field of bee research by, by being a truly good person. He always treats other people with respect. He's always interested in learning more and in vet in advancing research, uh, not so much in personal advancement, not so much in territoriality or jealousies. And as a result, he's always happy to help young scientists get started. And I think that is among his greatest contributions to the field of bee research, the fact that he 
over the years has helped it to grow and become stronger so that it's going to continue on with a great deal of vigor into the future. What would bee research be like to, today without Charles Michener's legacy? It's terrible to think about, but you know what? It isn't worth thinking about because we do have Charles Michener, and thank goodness he has been around for such a long period of time. Let's hope he keep, keeps going and keeps influencing the study of these animals. So thanks a lot, Mitch, and congratulations. <laughs>